he said that record length makes a lot more sense. And, you know, that's, so that's what we passed to user space. But name length, oh, no, no. Name length, that's not in the, st in the standards. So I don't, I, th that shouldn't be there. A lot of you have asked about a struct direct, which is a directory entry. And just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume we're on a 64-bit system, which means that everything starts at um, whatever and ends at whatever plus, you know, everything's eight bytes wide because 64 divided by eight is eight. So, you know, eight, 15, and so on. Anyway, um, to explain why the whole D Namlin versus D Reclin thing matters, here's what we have. This is a directory entry. D Ino is the inode number. It's eight, it, it's 64 bits. So that's nice and aligned. D off is some stupid offset number that doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know exactly how it's used, but uh, apparently it's useless to the user, so it's a waste. Um, so we're going to ignore it. It is aligned to a 64-bit uh, width, so we don't care. Now, I drew this out because D reclin, D type, and pad, you know, this might look kind of nice. It makes it aligned to 64 bits, but that's not actually what happens. Instead, D reclin here is a short. It's 16 bits. D type is a char, which means it's 8 bits. This is 24 out of 64 bits. Then there's a pad, which you don't see. Um, it's sometimes defined, but the compiler will add this pad char, which is another 8 bits. So 16 plus 8 plus 8 is 32. Technically, what this does right here, this is a 32-bit aligned boundary, but not 64. So then after this, you'll have dname, which is variable length. It, this is 4 bytes. So this is 4 bytes. And, you know, here's another 16 uh, or, um, I'm sorry, eight byte chunk, whatever, and it can go on pretty much forever. So the first problem is that D reclin, now you would think that D reclin here would return like this whole thing. So D reclin would be whatever this start is, then eh, eh, all the way to whatever this end is. And if dname doesn't go all the way here, you'd think it would go here. Here's the problem. D reclin, the record length, is a number representing here through not the name, but the end of the allocated space. So if the name ends here, reclin ends over here somewhere. It, if the name ends here, Reckland still ends here. If the name ends here, Reckland still ends here. You get the idea. It doesn't matter where the actual name length ends. The rest is just padded out with junk. So Reckland is how much space was allocated for this whole thing. So you would think naively that if we just take D Reckland and then we subtract the offset offset of d underscore name, right? d reclin, which is the whole thing, minus where d name starts. Well, that, that nukes all this stuff, right? So you would think you could just take the whole length minus the length up to this point, and you would get the length of the file name. However, because they give you in Reclin the total amount of space allocated, which is usually up to an alignment boundary here, you don't get the real file name length. Even worse, because the file name length here, if, if it's one or two or three or whatever, um, it's going to be real short. So you have um, this 32-bit aligned start. So the start of it's not 64-bit not aligned. Um, which means you've gotten an, an, the alignment incorrect. So if you start doing a memory copy, you can't just start here and go. Um, the record length changes depending on how much space is allocated. So you can't even just naively like look and see, oh, is this aligned to a 64? Because what you would normally do if you wanted to figure this out quickly, like I said, record length minus the offset of, you know, basically where the name starts, and you should have the length. But you don't know if it's got this much or this much or whatever. Now, if I wanted to find out what the name 
the E is not actually there. Um, if I wanted to find out what the name length is, um, I might start by taking the um, number that I get record length minus offset of. Now, if the name is four bytes or less, then I'm going to get some number um, that is going to have this four bytes. But then I've got more than that. So here's the problem. I can't just naively go, okay, let's let's look and see what, where it's aligned and just look at this, because we have this 32-bit split here to deal with. So we have to do all this nonsense to figure it out. And I don't have all of that information recorded anywhere, but I can tell you for a fact that I had to do some stuff to deal with this part. This, this, this 32-bit part has to be handled specially. And then the ending part here has to be handled specially. You basically have to count look for the null byte wherever um, in this chunk here, this this aligned chunk, to find where the end is. So you still have to do string length on an 8-byte wide section, and you can skip however many of the 4-byte plus the 8-byte um, there are, because there could be a ton of them. If this thing's like 40 characters long, you're going to have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and you, you know, basically you're going to have 5 8-byte sections and one 4. And you can do a string length just on the last 8 byte and then just assume the rest up to that point. Um, but the thing is, if we nuked D reclin and we just had D namlin, which is the name length, then we would know exactly where this ends without doing any of these shenanigans. The record length is not very useful. It just tells us how much space was allocated for this. Well, nothing in user space is ever going to care about how much space we allocated for this nonsense. Nobody cares how much space this takes up. What they care about is where the name ends. How long is this name? It knows, and it doesn't tell us. So if we nuke Reclin and swap in Namlin in its place, then we'll know the name length without doing any kind of calculations at all. Which means, I've heard some people argue about assembly language, and, you know, there's all these, like, uh, you know, SSE 4.2 has some, which, by the way, require 16-byte alignment. So 16-byte 16 um, 16 is 128 bit and there's also I think some AVX instructions which are 32 byte but um, there's string instructions in SSE 4.2 that you can use to um, more quickly look for the end of a string but it still requires some setup and some work if you already have the length you don't have to do any work you know that this is where it starts because that's where it always starts these are all fixed you know that this is where it starts. You know that this is the length. So you know from here to here is the name of the file. So all you have to do is say memory copy. And what's memory copy going to do? Well, it's going to see that you're starting on a 32-byte alignment, so it can grab a 32-byte word here to get up to the 64 alignment. Or even, potentially, because you've got ino and off and all this other um, stuff before it, you know, it, it's, what's that, 16, and then this. So basically, it's going to copy a 32, then it's going to copy a 64-bit, and then it's going to use potentially AVX to copy even bigger pieces. So it'll op do optimized operations to copy each section until it's done. Instead of going, is this byte zero? No. 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 Is this one? 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 Every single individual one along the way. So memory copy will give you the ability to move this stuff more quickly. You can you can do comparisons. You can do all kinds of stuff. You know, if you just need to know that the strings aren't equal, then you know how long it is already, so you can compare the lengths. If the lengths aren't equal, or if the lengths are equal, you can compare the contents in large pieces. Large pieces like this. Instead of one, 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 and you do a lot less work, and it takes a lot less time, and thus your program runs faster. Multiply that by, you know, 10,000, 100,000, however many files, you can see the speed improvement. Anyway, I hope that this has been a good explanation. Sorry if I pushed it up off the camera a little too much, but um, that's a basic explanation of what's going on there. Take it easy.